Welcome to Focus on Health, a series of educational programs highlighting current health issues sponsored by the School of Nursing at Salisbury University. I'm Dr. Mary DiBartolo, Professor of Nursing at Salisbury University and host of the program. I'm here today at Mac Incorporated in Salisbury with a very special guest. It's been a while since you've been on it the program, but while. you're back. And this is Stacy Walden. You are a dietitian and you do some independent consulting and such, and you also work out of a, of a wellness center Yeah, in we Cambridge. opened a new wellness center called Fairwinds Wellness, and I'm working outside of there. Doing some promotion is a slow but steady process of building, but it's a great opportunity to bring a new level of dietetics and new things for me. Right, and I know you also want to share this wonderful recipe yeah. you have. I'm calling it veggie spaghetti. I'm married to an Italian, so <laughs> I'm only allowed to use real pasta. But I certainly uh, am interested in learning about this recipe, which is using spaghetti squash as the spaghetti yeah. or pasta portion. And you have some other wonderful things to include um, um, to top the spaghetti. Anything you would do with a regular pasta, you can do with the spaghetti squash. And really, it's not so much about avoiding pasta, because I don't believe that that's necessary, but it's a way to incorporate a little more vegetables into your family's intake, sometimes especially with little ones who won't eat a lot of things. If you can be creative with it and make right. it fun, it's a way to do things, and it's just something different. And well, Yeah, well, carbs have gotten a bad rap of late, and you need carbs. You I so mean, need carbs. Your brain needs yeah. carbs, yeah. So yeah, it's this a shame. certainly looks interesting and colorful. Tell us it's about the ingredients. It's a lot of fun. So today I've chosen to do just a quick um, saute of sausage and spinach and tomatoes because that's something I would do with pasta. Um, you can really do anything. You can use a traditional jar of sauce and just top it that way. You could, anything you would do with the pasta you can do here. This is a nice product that I like because my uh, husband and I are vegetarian, so this gives us an opportunity to have a meat analog um, that's a plant-based. I like a plant-forward intake for anybody, even people who eat meat. I think if we can decrease that a little bit, then that's a healthier option. So we're going to use this field roast Italian sausage, and we're going to saute it up with some garlic, a little bit of tomato, throw in some spinach, and we'll have a beautiful finished product. I'm looking forward to trying I that. think it'll be delicious. I tried the plant-based burger. And it tastes pretty much like a burger, really, yeah. um, I found. I mean, it's not exactly a burger, no. but pretty close. So I'm curious how the sausage it is. It is quite delicious. It's a, a yummy addition to things. We cooked off the spaghetti squash ahead of time just to save a little bit of time and effort. So I thought I would just give you a look at that. Once it goes in the oven, you're going to cut it in half just like you would a pumpkin or anything else and hollow out all of the seeds and connective tissue, put it in the oven to bake takes about 40 to 45 minutes, and then when you're finished and, and it cools, I like to use it at 425. I don't know exactly. The whole purpose behind a lot of this new phase of cooking for me is to empower people to just trust their instincts. It's hard to be intuitive in the kitchen when you're always following somebody else's recipe and somebody else's ideas, and you just stop trusting yourself. So about 425, once a knife goes through it, it's done. I think generally this is a pretty large squash, so maybe it took me 45 minutes, but a smaller one would take a little bit less time. And does that have any kind of olive oil on the top or anything? Or you, you can put olive oil it? on it, salt and pepper. You turn it upside down because if you leave it this way, then the well will fill up with water and it kind of steams instead of roasts. I know people that put this in the microwave. I haven't done that yet. I like the little bit of browning and caramelization mm -hmm. that we get, but that would be a quick way to go about it. But turn it so, over, yeah. let it cool. And then you just take a fork and run it straight down, and look how it looks oh just a lot like spaghetti pasta, doesn't it? Yes, it Hence does. Hence the name. And I know there are recipes where you can be creative and actually put this right, all your filling right back in the squash and serve it that way. Uh, we're not going to do that right now, but this just gives you an idea. So that's the basic premise. And then for like little guys that will only eat butter and cheese on their pasta, you can stop there. You can do that Italian favorite called alio e olio, which is garlic and oil and red pepper flakes. That would be enough. Um, oh, we today like we're just, with garlic. Yeah, <laughs> they mm, have to have we garlic love garlic, in there. right? Yeah. Okay. So, so we're you gonna can do the same thing you say. You can do anything you would with pasta. And the Italians, you probably know this, being married to one, they're very specific about what kinds of sausage ma sauces marry up with what kinds of pasta. We're not quite so caught up with that in America. So I think people should just do what they intuitively would, have a little bit of fun 
trust themselves, see what comes up. Um, so that's a new series that I'm starting at Fair Winds. It's a series called You Can. So that I can just teach people, you can do this. Look, right. I'm going to give you the basic steps, and you take it from there, and people will then feed themselves more. We can't be healthy without taking control of feeding ourselves. Right, and I see you have some colorful items, and I you're not do. so much into uh, recipes so much as right. what do you have or what will add color and nutrients. And opening the, the fridge and just kind of going with what's there. I think that we get so caught up in instruction that we say, oh, I can't do that. I don't have everything I need. We get so caught up in nutrients, we forget to just eat food. And telling a child to eat the colors of a rainbow, that doesn't go away. Adults should do mm -hmm. the same thing. So that's a good thing to think about. Um, and I think it can be a main dish, and I think it can be a side. So this is the, basically what that's going to look like. We're going to take a break and get these things sautéed and make a quick sauce and show you how quickly it all comes together. Well, I have a question for you sure. first. I know I'm a recipe follower. My husband kind of makes fun of me for that. But I've gotten away from that, and sometimes I'm like, well, let me not waste what's you know, in, what's the, in fridge. the fridge. Use right. that. Or sometimes I'll Google ideas of what could be a substitute you know, for a certain thing mm -hmm. um, if I'm out of a certain ingredient versus running out to the store. Right, so. especially in the winter, in the yes. dark and the cold. It has yes. to really be worth it to, yes. to leave. But once you kind of gain that confidence in the kitchen, then you find that you explore a little bit easier and a little more, and then bring the rest of the family into the kitchen. Um, it's hard to tell people um, about things like this because we're so used to ordering things or going to restaurants or believing that someone else knows something we don't know. We really have everything we need. We just need to trust ourselves and get back into our own kitchens. Very good. So we're going to go and Yeah, let's get cooking. Sure, we'll, sure. We'll come back. Sure. That sounds great. Okay. So Stacy, now we're at the sauteing portion of the recipe. So tell us what ingredients you're going to saute. All right, so we're just throwing together a topping for the pasta. Um, today I chose what was available in the kitchen, which is the whole idea behind this. And we always start with olive oil, and I'm a huge garlic fan. So, so I've I. got a couple of extra cloves of garlic in here. If it offends anybody, of course you can do something else, but everybody should try to incorporate fresh garlic into their intake. There's it's nothing good for like you, it. Right? It's got a lot of amazing properties, but it's also so delicious. So if you've only had powdered or maybe that pre chopped that's in the jar, it's just not the same. So this will go a long way. And I love the little handy gadget you have there. Yeah, this so is a garlic, garlic press. Yeah. If you cut garlic and let it sit for 15 or 20 minutes, it will give it time to um, release some uh, additional properties. But I don't always have that kind of time. And I'm not always patient enough to mince on a chopping board. Certainly either way is fine. But this is just a lot of fun. Sometimes a little tool goes a long way for enjoyment. But that's a garlic press, and that's what that is all about. Now, you can use the pre-minced pre garlic if you, you like. You can. I say you compromise flavor when you do that, but you certainly can. So today I'm putting in some Italian field roast sausage, which is a veggie-based veggie product. I happen to enjoy eating a plant-forward intake. You could use traditional sausage. You could use beans and no sausage. Uh, you can really do anything, but this is a lovely product. It's actually eggplant based, which is interesting. So we're just going to saute up the garlic and the sausage, and then we're going to throw in some tomatoes um, and maybe deglaze the pan with a little bit of wine, and we're going to have a sauce. So about how long do you have to let the sausage saute? Is it diff take a little different time to cook than a the meat-based sausage? You know, I think it's a little bit easier when you have a meat-based product, you have that color change to mm -hmm. watch for, so you can make sure that nothing is um, any longer too pink or too red. With this one, I just like to give it a little bit of crispness on the edges. Um, so really, there's no set time, but And it won't um, change color, through. you're saying? The no, it'll get a little bit caramelized and a little bit browner, but that's just, to me, just like with our spaghetti squash, once the sugars and something start to caramelize, you get a different level of, level of flavor that I happen to enjoy. So we'll just let that go for just a little bit, and then we'll flip them over and throw in our tomatoes. So I can go ahead and turn it up, because I've got the time to pay attention to it. I'm not going to hurt anything. Can you smell that? It smells great. It's amazing, doesn't yeah. it? But I'm just finding more and more that people don't have, they have 
They haven't taken the time in their schedules, they're overscheduled, their kids are overscheduled, they run into a grocery store or a fast food, they buy things that are convenient, and every now and then that's great. But if we're always eating convenience foods, we're going to get ourselves in a lot of trouble health-wise. Mm -hmm. So my whole take here was just to bring people back to the kitchen. Sometimes you go into a, a produce section and you think, what do I do with that? What is that product? What is this? So maybe we start featuring some of those things. We can give people a little more uh, confidence to go home and try the same thing. Maybe they'll run to the grocery store and say, hey, I just saw a segment on spaghetti squash. Let's try one. And you can find the plant-based sausage um, here on the shore? You can. Um, so many more products are coming to the shore. We now have a few grocery stores that are bringing things. I think supply and demand mm -hmm. also. But again, this really is just one option. It happens to be one that I had at the house. I thought, well, how am I going to do a segment on not running to the store for all kinds of ingredients if, uh, if I don't take advantage of that and do the same thing? Well, the thing is, isn't aren't some of these plant-based products cost a little more too? Some so of them do. And I think one of the unfortunate things is that sometimes people think if it's plant-based, then it's definitely healthier. That's not always the case. A lot of times plant-based products and meat analogs are very um, processed foods. So we have to be careful not to be sloppy vegetarians. But it gives us a chance to um, try something different. I don't know why people feel like they have to identify themselves as either a meat eater or not a meat eater. I think everybody should just try a variety of things. And if everyone ate a little bit less meat, then they might be a little more prone to incorporate more vegetables and fruits, which should be the basis of any good intake anyway. Right. So you see how this is just starting to brown? I know, it looks good. Smells good. All right, so we got a nice little brown on the sausage, and um, the key to that is to do it without the garlic getting overcooked, because the garlic turns bitter when right. it gets overcooked. I'm going to throw some tomatoes in there. Yeah, they, they're a little smaller and rounder. What kind of tomatoes are those? These are Campari tomatoes. They um, look delicious. They have nice a good bit of flavor to them. It's hard to find a fresh tomato right now in this part time of the year, but they were what looked good at the grocery store, so I grabbed those, and I thought that it would lend itself well to what we were trying to do today. Um, I love to use little yellow Zuma tomatoes. Mm -hmm. They're a lot of fun. Um, there's no, whatever works for you, whatever you enjoy. I think this is a, another opportunity to really bring kids into the kitchen as well. Which, what do they like? Do they have different colors? Is there a way to add maybe a blend of tomatoes? Um, in the summer, it's great because I always have tomatoes growing outside, especially mm. little cherry tomatoes. Now, are you purposely trying to smash some of the tomatoes? I really am, tomatoes? yeah. I'm just trying to make just it go faster <laughs> and I'm trying to let a little bit of the juice out because what that will do is it will start to caramelize and come together and give a a thickness to it. I'm going to deglaze that very quickly with a little bit of white wine and we're going to have some pasta. See a little bit of black pepper. I think black pepper is a lot like coffee. If you release and crack the peppers at the last minute, just like when you grind a coffee bean, that great aroma mm -hmm. comes out. Things don't have a chance to dry out like they do. So if you have only had powdered uh, pepper that's already ground and in a can, do yourself a favor and experiment with some peppercorns. Same thing with salts. We could do a whole show on salt and pepper. Well, That'd be a lot of fun. We'll put that on the agenda. Yeah. So I know. I don't use regular pepper anymore. I just have the grinder. Yeah. It makes a huge difference. These are telecherry black peppercorns. Um, whatever olive oil I have in the house at the time. Um, olive oil is another thing we could do a whole segment on because there's so many uh, there's so much out there on the market, and it can actually be quite confusing. So we'll save that for another another time. Okay. I'm going to throw some spinach in here. Um, and that's baby spinach. This correct? is baby spinach uh, from a local farm because this gives us a little bit of color. It adds to the nutrient intake, but really, I think that the variety of colors makes things more appealing. Think about some of the biggest animals are vegetarians. So bright colors and wonderful smells that are in fruits and vegetables are meant to attract us to the things that are good for us. Spinach. You have to use a lot of spinach. It you cooks do. Down so, but it, you know, it cooks fabulous. down very quickly. Um, we really just want to wilt it. I was going to say, you don't want to overcook it, do you? Nope. What I want is to get it, things good and hot. So when I throw a little splash of white wine on there, I then get a sauce, basically. The tomatoes are now 
ready. You see how they've released a lot of their liquid. Um, some people don't like tomato skins and tomato seeds. I happen to think they're yummy. All right, so we'll take that. I buy these small four packs of white wine so that I can always throw a splash of it into what I'm cooking and I don't have to open an entire bottle and feel like, what do I do with the rest of the wine? Um, a key to this is don't cook with wine you wouldn't drink. If it's not good enough to drink, it's probably not good enough to cook with. Now, some so, people think the opposite. You should only use, like, bad wine. I don't cook. know. Have you ever I, taste, hey, I, well, I wouldn't want to do that to my friend. friend. <laughs> I, that, but I didn't think of buying the small bottles for the cooking. Yeah, it's a, it's, a nice, um, it's a nice trick, I think. So is that a whole bottle or a half no, a bottle? No, that's just, just, less, a, just under a half. And it's just going to pick up all those pieces on the bottom and deglaze it. It's going to thicken up a little bit, and it's going to be a lovely sauce in just really a little bit good. of time. Yeah, and so what are we, maybe 10 minutes into this? Uh, we have a meal. We probably could have gone a little bit faster, but we're having so much fun talking. And the spaghetti squash, you just basically bake that. There's not a lot of time involved in that. Cutting it in half, cleaning it out. Um, um, the bake time if you're in a rush, but then again, yeah. I told you some people will do that in the microwave. I haven't tried that yet. Um, we could throw that in and toss it in here and warm it all back up, or we can pour this right over the top. Um, again, no hard, fast rules. The only time you really need to pay attention to rules and ingredients and amounts is when you're baking. It's a, chem a series of chemical reactions, and chemistry is pretty straightforward. But when it comes to savory foods, if you really aren't gonna, you can't hurt too much of anything. If something doesn't taste good, that's actually a nice lesson. You think, well, I'm not gonna do that again. But uh, once you start cooking intuitively, then there's less frustration with um, that daily, it becomes more fun and less of a chore. And I think that's part of what makes um, families uh, eat together at home and that makes everybody healthier. So we're good with this. It looks fabulous. Yeah, I'd like to see it just get a little bit less fluid, but I don't want to overcook things too much either. And as you said, once you get comfortable in the kitchen, then there can be some flexibility involved oh, with ingredients man. versus feeling so Just attached to a recipe. Just bringing people back home. Yeah. We have taught people to stop trusting themselves on all kinds of levels, and the kitchen is no place for that. Mm -mm. All right. So we'll take a break here and go put things together. All right. So we have a nice sauce here developed I think just enough. We're going to come over and just really top this. A little bit of liquid down there I wish we didn't have, but this just shows you how easy it is. All right, our spinach got a little bit wilted. It's all going to mix up in our tummy anyway. Well, while you're, uh is that about ready to go? I need to get us some plates. It is ready to go. I'm going to top this with some Parmigiano. You can use tr regular Parmesan. You don't have to put cheese on it at all, but it looks like pasta to me with cheese. And a little fresh black pepper. All right, so we're topping it with a little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano. You can use Parmesan. You can use Guana Padana, which is a little bit saltier. Some fresh black pepper. I love some pepperoncini. A red pepper flakes, so I don't have any with me right now. A splash of a really nice yeah. olive oil over the top. One appetite. That looks fabulous. You know what I've found? This oil, like basil flavored oil. Could you use something like that, or would that be? Basil would be lovely in it. I probably wouldn't put basil along with the spinach, but you could. Um, arugula would be delicious. Ah. Just stir it into it fresh. Um, whatever works. That's the joy of it. I know. Well, let's give it a try. Let's do that. Got us some plates. Looking forward to trying this sausage. Not had it. Yeah, it the sausage be. is delicious. There we go. Hmm, that is good. Well, hopefully, it's a way to inspire people to just take a chance, go to the kitchen, see what happens. Yeah, you don't necessarily have to put sausage in it. Couldn't you, you make certainly it with all do the not? I probably would put just white beans in there or something, or maybe just. Saute up uh, a variety of vegetables. That is really good. That's pretty good, huh? Mm-hmm. So, you don't believe in recipes, correct? 
you so know, every now and then a recipe goes a long way, but when a recipe keeps you from cooking because you need so many ingredients or you're not familiar with the ingredients and you're not comfortable with substituting, then what's the point? But maybe just run down the ingredients um, that people could use or you know, these are the main ingredients. Maybe I think you could make a spaghetti squash and just take a jar sauce and put it right over it. I think that for children to mix in a little bit of butter and Parmesan and call it a day. Um, I like the idea with the arugula. The sausage was just something that I had around. I, people really do kind of like to have meat in their intake, so mm -hmm. it just gives you an option whether you're a meat eater or not. Um, I think the possibilities are endless. And the sausage, even though it's plant-based, does have protein in it. Uh, oh yes, that one's an eggplant base, but almost all foods have a little bit of protein. I mean, think about um, gorillas and think about uh, rhinoceroses and all the big gigantic animals that eat really mostly plants. Got to have some protein in it, right? Right. I know peas um, have a lot of protein. They do. In them. Pea protein yep. is a real popular one right now. Um, so I think that I think that anything that you could come up with, you could you could try here. Well, anything sauteed in olive oil and garlic. And garlic could go a long way. Throw a little splash of white wine and you're yeah. all good, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, Stacy, thank you so much for coming in and showing us this wonderful recipe and, and it's stressing the importance of just being flexible and yeah. using healthy, colorful fruits and, I mean, vegetables in this case. I think um, it's like anything else, it becomes a habit and you have to start somewhere. So just get in your own kitchen, Go to the produce section and just think, well, what do I not know about? Hey, what is that? What can I do with that? The internet is great for ideas. Go home and just try and take back control of your kitchen, your health by cooking in your own kitchen. Well, being adventurous, you're yes. saying, is helpful too, yes. as well as flexible. Definitely. So, thanks again. It was thank just you. wonderful. It was a lot of fun. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Focus on Health here on PAC 14. Mm -hmm.